Hi, welcome to the Akamai Partner Champions Podcast. I'm Kat Moore, a Senior Channel Marketing Manager here at Akamai Technologies. Thanks so much for joining. This podcast is for Akamai partners, customers, and anyone interested in learning more about technology trends and Akamai. Here we will talk about what's happening in the threat landscape, what organizations are doing to update their technology stack, and more. If you're an account manager at one of Akamai's value-added partners, this podcast can help you identify if an account you're managing has an opportunity to maximize their technology strategy. If you're a customer of one of those partners, you may hear something during this podcast that can help you decide if now's the right time to reach out to your account manager to explore one of the new technologies we're discussing. If you enjoy this podcast, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Fun stuff. All righty. So thank you so much, Mac, for joining the podcast, the Akamai Champions podcast for our partners. Um, you know, just so we can get started, can you please provide just a quick intro, you know, your background, who you are, and just something interesting about you? Yeah, sure. Glad to, Kat. And thank you for, uh, thank you for inviting me to your podcast. I'm psyched to be here. So, uh, yeah, my name is Mac Grant. Um, I'm in year eight of my Gardakor Akamai journey. Um, I started as a single rep covering the central U.S. territory back when uh, Gardakor was truly a startup. And today I'm responsible for the Akamai Enterprise Security Group sales team here in North America. And uh, and that enterprise security group for that group, Akamai Gardakor segmentation remains really the largest focus for our team. Awesome. So, you know, just hopping right into it. Why do you think all companies should develop a segmentation strategy? Mm, yeah, th that's a good question, Kat. And it's an easy one for me. Um, I've been in the security and IT infrastructure business for really a long time. Um, I've seen companies large and small struggle to secure the inside of their data center or the inside of their cloud environments for way too long. And so many companies just come to accept that hard, crunchy exterior, soft gooey interior reality and everybody in, understands now that it's really impossible to eliminate all the risk that some bad actor will get in so it you know ends up becoming a waiting game uh, but with uh akamai garter se core segmentation or with segmentation in general um, our customers are getting past these issues in a number of ways uh, first of all we're we're giving them a first under a firm understanding of what their internal traffic looks like uh, without that, you can't really distinguish between good and bad traffic. With it, an attacker sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, the second thing we give them is, you know, they're simply reducing the surface area accessible when an attacker gets in, when they're able to gain access. So they can't move around, they can't spread out, they can't gain a large enough foothold to execute a ransomware attack or some other variety of crippling incident. Then the, the third thing that, that we're giving them with this software-based segmentation approach is that uh, with our proactive threat hunting, we are continually and proactively helping them improve their security posture. Uh, we're using our technology as well as our people to help them identify both threats and risks within their environment. Once we identify those things, we, we use that to kind of create strategies and policies that further help them mitigate their risks um, and uh, eliminate threats over time beyond their just kind of basic segmentation goals. Make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It seems like everyone should think about segmentation. I'm sure in all your times of selling and talking to organizations about it, you probably run into, you know, a few scenarios where like they just don't get it right away and they're probably a little bit hesitant. It's a new concept <laughs> for them. Can yeah. you share one of an example, you know, that you had where your customer had that aha moment and what was it? Like, what was the critical point that made them have that? <laughs> yeah, sometimes that happens before they buy the technology. Sometimes it's after they buy the technology, but there are lots of them. 
Uh, there is one that over the years has stuck out as a really powerful story, in my opinion. Uh, this was this one that I'm thinking of as a critical infrastructure customer, um, and uh, and they had just made a buy of our technology, and it was relatively early in 2021. Um, what happened for them was that one of their security analysts noticed something kind of suspicious, and when they were investigating, when they were looking at the Gardecore logs and alerts. And, uh, and nothing else really was firing or, or giving them an indication that anything bad was going on. Uh, but when they took a closer look at, you know, the processes and what was going on, they determined that it was, in fact, uh, a malicious actor inside their environment. Um, the good news is they had Gardecore deployed. They didn't have any policy in place at the time, but they were able to respond quickly and just kind of push a blocking policy. And Kat, guess what happened next? Uh, did we stop it? <laughs> well, the, the good news is nothing happened, okay. which is what you want to have happen, right? Um, so then after that, you know, because nothing happened, but because something suspicious was going on, the CISO ordered a forensic investigation to try to understand what happened and ensure, you know, there wouldn't be a repeat performance. And uh, I remember him telling me the story. He said the hair on his back kind of stood up. And honestly, mine did as well as as he went through the the uh, situation. And uh, so, remember, this is spring of 2021. Can you remember anything else that was going on in cyber back in 2021 with critical infrastructure? It's not a stump the chump question. <laughs> well, you everyone was getting hit by a bunch of different types of ransomware. Yeah, yeah. And in criti critical infrastructure, the big one was Colonial Pipeline. Yes. So, uh, so at the time Rob was reading his forensic report, uh, you know, that was the same time the details of the colonial pipeline hack were going public. And as he was reading it, and this is what made the hair on his back stand up, uh, you know, it was the same group, dark side, you know, out of Russia. It was the same IP addresses that were the source. They were using the same toolkits as colonial pipeline, same time frame, of course, that the attack was going on. Um, because he's this is when he's doing the forensic analysis, uh, and that's when the colonial pipeline information was becoming public. Same techniques, same everything. So he concluded that hey, like Dark Side was attacking them at the same time that they were attacking Colonial Pipeline. Talk about dodging a bullet, huh? Because um, the result was, you know, they succeeded at taking down Colonial Pipeline. Uh, they did not succeed at taking our customer down. Um, they failed because they were, you know, so because they were able to deploy a blocking segmentation policy. And uh, so I'd call that a pretty powerful aha moment. He got a lot more buy-in from his executives uh, to kind of tighten down policies and continue moving with the, with the project as a result of that. Awesome. You know, I think that one thing that a lot of organizations are challenged with is just getting that executive buy-in. You know, especially when you think about infrastructure type of um, verticals where they typically are slow, I guess, to spend on their technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk to clients, what's one pointer you give them when thinking about how to address ransomware threats and different types of threats to, one, just analyze their space and understand like what should they prioritize and then to get that executive buy-in to start to you know put some things in action yeah yeah well i think this day and age I, you have to think about it from the perspective of what you can do a you know most quickly and b most completely to eliminate you know the risk of something uh, like that and and for me i see every day and the story above I think is a really good example of that, that this software-based segmentation effort is the fastest and most complete way to protect yourself from this risk. It's, you know, no, it's not a 100% guarantee silver bullet, bullet, you know, and you got to actually deploy the technology and keep your eyes on it, but it will get you further on that journey with, uh, with a lot less time and effort than any other strategy could. Um, and in terms of, you know, that that's really the key to doing that executive justification uh, because you have to be able to understand what kind of outcome you're going to be able to deliver and you have to be able to articulate that a powerful outcome that rises above all, all of the other potential 
projects that executives are looking at potentially approving or declining. You know, the buy, the bar is very high in terms of uh, what you have to be able to deliver um, in order to get something approved these days. Totally. Um, and I think that one thing that happened post pandemic and during the pandemic, a lot of organizations went and they spent on a bunch, they spent a bunch of money on zero trust initiatives, right? Because people were mm-hmm. going remote. And I think that, you know, specifically as our partners are talking to their clients, there's been a lot of money spent already to address different parts of a zero trust strategy. How would you say that, you know, thinking about a segmentation strategy, how that adds on top of an organization's existing zero trust strategy um, and can help enhance it? Mm, Yeah. Uh, Boy, uh, that takes me back. Um, Yeah, I I literally decided to join Gardecore back in late 2016 because of zero trust. Uh, And the reason for that was before that time, the concepts of zero trust seemed, I don't know, largely theoretical. Because the use of you know, like physical or virtual firewalls to create boundaries and perimeters, it, it just wasn't achievable for most organizations. And uh, so, you know, corporations weren't really buying in back then. Um, and the reason for that is that really moving traffic to any enforcement point, whether it's a physical one or a virtual one, it adds too much complexity, too much risk, and it, and it becomes inflexible as a result and doesn't scale. And Meanwhile, you know, IT organizations are already trying to keep up with what the business is asking them to do to keep up with the business, you know, the competition in the business world. So it just it just wasn't adding up. Um, but I saw software based segmentation and specifically what Gardecore was doing really as a way to get past that and make zero trust attainable. Uh, one of the big reasons for that is you're distributing that enforcement point so you don't have to move traffic to do the segmentation. Uh, and and when you're actually showing, you know, you're you're actually seeing the application depending things. You're seeing what the applications need in order to communi- communicate. Um, you're giving your teams real current knowledge, and uh, and a lot more confidence develops around how you could create policy that actually blocks. Because that's one of the other big things that's hard with zero trust is how do you how do you get to the point where you're actually confident blocking traffic because you're absolutely confident that it's traffic you should not allow. And uh, and this software-based approach that gives you visibility really gives you that confidence. Um, so when I you said, you know, on top of an organization's zero trust strategy, I would say that software-based segmentation really should be the core of a zero trust strategy, not not just, you know, kind of the uh, the tip of the iceberg or the or the pinnacle of it. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that, you know, going into my next question, a lot of our partners, you know, they have different vendors that they are positioning to their customers um, to talk about different zero trust concepts. You know, why should organizations really trust Akamai to be their go-to segmentation partner and really have segmentation at the forefront of their zero trust strategy? Mm, Yeah, that's a big one, Kat. Well, of course, we have the tech. And yes, you know, speaking of Forrester and Zero Trust, you know, it's been vetted. It's been firmly shown to be at the top of the heap in terms of technology, in terms of solutions, you know, you know, from customer feedback given to Forrester. Um, But I think the real reason that um, that organizations should partner with us to deliver this key capability is we know how to make our customers successful with this. Um, it is a paradigm shift. Our customers that are doing this for the first time have a lot of uncertainty and they should, um, you know, they may be concerned about, you know, the resources that are going to be needed to be successful. They, they may not know where to start. Uh, they may be concerned, you know, we'll block legitimate traffic, all sorts of things kind of swim around in their heads as they're actually facing the reality of, doing something with this technology because they haven't done it before. So I I think they should partner with us because we do know how to do it. We've done it for hundreds of large enterprises in every vertical market and on literally every continent. Uh, Well, maybe not in Arctica, (laughs) Uh, but maybe we'll do that this year. 
Um, so we know where to start. We know how to deliver these projects successfully. Um, we know how to deliver real value and really, really powerful outcomes. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, we'll get you where you want to be and, and we'll ensure, we'll help you ensure that that value delivery continues, not just in year one, but, you know, on into the future as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mac. Um, you know, is there anything else that you would want to share or add about segmentation or about your experience selling it? Um, it, I, I would say that this is quickly becoming the de facto way to do segmentation. Uh, that's one of the big shifts from 2016, 2017 till now. Um, and I think Forrester's new wave two years ago was one of the big kind of moments in time when it be, was recognized, be started becoming recognized as a, as a, uh, as a standard approach. So uh, you don't need to be afraid to, uh, you know, undertake this. Uh, a lot of organizations have gone there already. Um, and, uh, and this is, this is the way, you know, two years from now, probably 60 to 70% of organizations will have something like this in place and we'll be using software to do segmentation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining our first episode of our Partner Champions podcast. Um, and, you know, I think that this was very helpful to talk through different aspects of segmentation because, like you said, it's at the forefront of a lot of our customers' minds. And we want to make sure that everyone, you know, can just think through different um, strategies to uncover opportunities to talk about segmentation with their accounts. Thank you so much, Mac. Thanks for having me, Kat.